In today's video, I'm gonna be giving a care guide and species profile on peacock cichlids. Peacocks are African cichlids from Lake Malawi and they are some of the most vibrant, colorful fish you'll find in the hobby today. Really excited to talk about them, so let's dive right in. Peacock cichlids, or Aluna acara, are a genus of cichlids found in Lake Malawi in East Africa. These fish are known for their vibrant colors and active nature, making them a very popular choice for most fish keepers. Lake Malawi is home to a few groups of commonly kept cichlids in the hobby, including Mbuna, peacocks, and haps. Mbuna stays smaller than the others, preferring cave structures and rock work in their tanks, while peacocks and haps are bigger and prefer much more open swimming space. Lake Malawi is in East Africa, and the water parameters are higher in pH and with harder water. The ideal range in pH is around 7.5 to 8.5 with harder water conditions. I typically recommend keeping your water parameters consistent rather than chasing these numbers in your tank as the consistency will be much more beneficial long term. I also recommend focusing on maintaining a cycled tank with no ammonia or nitrite and keeping your nitrates as low as possible. But one easy way to raise your pH just a bit is by using crushed coral or aragonite sand as your substrate. This would help avoid any big fluctuations in your tank without having to use any types of chemicals. And their ideal temperature should be somewhere in the 76 to 82 degree range. Peacock cichlids are some of the most colorful and vibrant fish in the hobby today, and there are roughly 22 different species. Although there are some color variations like albino, obese, and different strains from different breeders. So you can collect a solid group of peacocks with all the colors out there. Some of my favorite species include the lemon jake, which is bright yellow with some blue and some wide fins. The dragon blood variants can provide a great pop of red in your tank. And if you're into hybrids, some OBs can have some really unique color patterns. The sulfur head peacock has a cool yellow stripe down its head and definitely is one of my favorites. The red shoulder peacock can be a bit aggressive at times, but has a beautiful blue color pattern with a red stripe down its shoulder. The Nagara flame tail is my all time favorite, both due to its incredible color and the tail patterns. And the name is pretty cool as well. Identifying males and females is very easy with peacocks as long as they're old or large enough. Males will display the vibrant coloration while females stay a bit drab and gray. Due to this, peacocks are commonly kept in all male display tanks like I have here. This not only provides a beautiful color pop in the tank, but also helps to limit the aggression without females with males. If I drop just one female in this tank, the aggression would definitely increase substantially. If you are going to mix these, I just recommend keeping a group of females alongside each male, which is common for breeding groups. Peacocks are usually labeled as semi-aggressive, but if you keep the right ratio of males to females, you'll be in a really good spot. Another key factor is their tank setup. A larger tank size will definitely help mitigate aggression issues, and I would recommend a 75 gallon tank or larger for peacocks. Some people say 55 gallons would work, but longer term it would be best to have a 75 gallon tank or larger. Peacocks do grow to around 6 inches and they are very active swimmers, so the extra length in your tank would be ideal. In most peacock setups, it is recommended to overstock your tank somewhat to help reduce that aggression further. This avoids one single fish getting picked on and things are more spread throughout the tank. If you do go this route, just make sure to keep up with your water changes and have adequate filtration. And because they are open water swimmers, the ideal tank setup has limited decor. It's definitely something to think about if you're looking into peacock cichlids. If you do want some elaborate aquascape, they may not be the fish for you. I always say that peacock cichlids are really the decorations in the tank themselves because they have so much activity and color. So the tank setup can be very simple with just some sand and rocks. Live plants will likely be eaten or destroyed over time with peacocks, but some hardy plants like Anubias might make it for a while. You could also try pothos on top of your tank if you'd like some help pulling out some nitrates in your aquarium. I recommend having strong filters and a wave maker as well. Peacocks love the water flow and swimming in the current from a wave maker. And just another reason why they can't have too much decor in the tank is that both peacocks and haps can be very territorial and claim more area in the tank than usual. This is one reason we wouldn't recommend keeping peacocks with Mbuna as they require different aquascapes to really thrive. Peacocks and haps are better suited as tank mates due to the tank setup and diet requirements. Peacocks will readily eat most food out there and it's very enjoyable and fun to watch them go crazy after some food. I feed extreme pellets of differing sizes along with extreme krill flakes. You could also mix in some frozen brine shrimp or krill for a treat. Another reason to avoid peacocks in a tank with Mbuna is just that dietary need with Mbuna needing a much more vegetable based diet. 
We did an entire video on mixing these groups, which I'll leave down in the description, along with links to the ideal foods for these fish. So when it comes to tank mates, the best option would be other peacocks or haps. Common haps are especially good tank mates as they have similar temperaments, behaviors, and diets. Predator haps can usually work as well, but they do require a larger tank of at least six feet in length to keep them long term. Other tank mate options for peacocks could include some bottom dwellers like Cynodonus catfish like I have in my tank, maybe some different types of plecos, clown loaches, or really any scavenger type fish that stay near the bottom and hide out a lot. Some people do keep peacocks with South and Central American cichlids, and although it definitely can be done, it just isn't ideal. Similar to Mbuna, they just have a different tank setup and dietary needs most of the time. Not saying you can't do it, just trying to give the ideal recommendations here. I would definitely avoid your smaller, peaceful community fish as they'd likely be bullied or eaten over time. Small tetras, barbs, and live bears are probably no-goes here. And then when it comes to breeding, if you have a mix of males and females, it will likely happen once they are a little over 3 inches or so in size. You'll notice the females start holding eggs in their mouth, usually looking like they have a mouthful of food. If you're trying to breed them, you can take the holding females out and remove the eggs manually, then place them into a tumbler to hatch. In the right tank setup, some of these babies may hatch even without intervention. If there's enough space in the tank, you may see some fry appear at some point. But in summary, peacocks are beautiful, colorful, and active African cichlids, and they aren't too difficult to keep as long as you have a big enough tank and a proper tank setup. As mentioned, I will leave links down in the description below to a couple other videos we've done on peacocks if you'd like to learn more, or if you'd like to see links to filters and food and other products I use with my peacock cichlids. I hope you found this information helpful, and if you have any questions, make sure to leave that down in the comment section below. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.